It's a very, very warm welcome to Hope Channel Kenya. I'm always very excited to know that you're sitting beside your TV and watching us. Let me tell you, there's nothing as pleasant as knowing that you have a friend. I may not have met you, I may not know you, but by God's grace, as we interact through our TV shows, I'm always excited. This is a very special program. It's called Storyline. It's a program that brings you people's testimonies of how the Lord has been gracious to them in many ways. And we thank God that today we have a very special guest. Her name is Sister Judy Atito. And my name is Catherine Nyameno on Tita. So you're very welcome. Sister Judy. Yes. You're very, very welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me, where were you born? I was born in Kisumu County, uh -huh. near Kachisab County, uh -huh. Aguru West location. So that's where you grew up? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. I've invited you to the studio today because you have a special tool that you use for walking around. Yes. And I know that you're a leader of Adventist Possibility Ministries, which means that uh, you lead and support people that have a certain, what we consider a disability, but now we know that these people are enabled differently. Sure. Tell me a little, were you born like this? No, I was not born able differently. Mm -hmm. I was born just like any normal child. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the age of 60, I was, I got polio. At the age of six? Six years old. You got polio? Yes. Uh -huh. That's what I'm being told. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that's what, what my mother told me that I was from school. I fell down and for two years I was down. I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk. So they had to do all they could to make me walk and talk mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you grew up, I mean, you, you had no idea that you were not born like this. Yes. And your mom told you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you feel when you just realized that actually you were born normally, but something happened on the way? Nothing actually, because at six years you are young. Mm. Yeah, you are very young. Even to start knowing, doing things mm -hmm. on your own and accepting. Mm -hmm. You just go as per what you are told. Mm -hmm. So it didn't take me with any surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you doing things like other children? Did you play? Did you do, did you fetch water? After the disability or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. I'm the firstborn. Oh. Yeah, I'm the first, firstborn in a family of seven. So mm -hmm. you can imagine I, I had to do it to teach the other children. Mm -hmm. I fetch water. And I also wash, mm -hmm. I cook. Mm. I think the time I was taken to boarding school, when I came back is when I, I became a bit weak. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. So you didn't feel like you were different from other children? No. Mm -mm. No, when I, some, when I feel like I'm different, when people are moving and running mm. towards something, is when I can feel, hey, Kumba, I cannot run like the other people. Mm. But in the normal life, I'm just like any other. Mm -hmm. Yes. So tell me, being a firstborn in a family of seven, what were some of your responsibilities uh, as a firstborn? You know, as a firstborn, you need to be a role model mm -hmm. to this, this, the siblings. Mm -hmm. You have to do things that they, if they imitate, it's, it does not go, it it's give your parents. Mm -hmm. It gives your parents, uh, an, what can I say? You know, once you, you, when you are a, a firstborn, you do things differently because if you misbehave, they also may will misbehave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I went to school just like the other people, mm -hmm. and they saw me going through school from form one to form four, mm -hmm. from class 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 one to class eight, mm -hmm. and to college, and now here I am. Mm -hmm. Yes. What did you train in? First, I did business administration at Mabego Technical Training Institute. Then I also did secretarial. Mm. Yeah. And ac basic accounts. Mm. Yeah. You know, Judy, in, in my days, yes. we, when you talk about having trained as a secretary, I remember in my days they used to say it has to be someone who moves fast, who does things. You know, I mean, and generally that's how people take secretaries sure. to be because mm. the boss calls them and they have to rush for this and that, doing photocopies. Why did you choose that career? 
you know, I want to go behind Kidogo. Mm. I lost my dad when I was in Form 1. Mm. So when I lost my dad, so my mom was struggling to pay my school fee. Being that she was just an housewife with small, small businesses. Mm -hmm. So when I did my Form 4, I sat home for a, a very long time. Mm. Then I met a friend who asked me if I did Form 4. Then I said yes. Then this friend told me, Judy, I'm heading a college. Can you please come and see if you can enroll to this course? Mm -hmm. That is secret. When I went, I got receptionist. There was ele electronics and there was what? There were, there were three courses. Then I chose secretarial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with the bosses calling here and there, it now depends with the boss. Mm -hmm. The boss need to know your limitation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it comes to doing that. So what do you do now? What work now do you I'm an do? audit clerk at the mm. University of Nairobi. Mm. Yes. Because you did some accounting? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to take you back to the fact that you lost your dad, yeah. you were the firstborn, and you had a disability. What did you feel? When I lost my dad, I thought my life has stopped, has come to the stop, because my dad was the sole breadwinner in our family. He was sick? Yeah, he was sick just for a few weeks. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And so you stayed home for quite some time? You no, know, my dad died when we, we closed school third term. It was December, November 31st, if I can remember very well. Mm. We had just closed school, then he died. Which class were you? That I was time? in Form 1. You were in Form 1. That you were was very young. Yeah, very young. Mm -hmm. I was only 13 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when my father died, so come January, he was buried 5th December. Then come January the following year, I had to be home for like two weeks before I went to school mm -hmm. because my mom could not afford, afford the school fee. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for my grandmother, mm -hmm. the mother to my mom. They chipped in and I went back to school. So in school people didn't know why I took long to report to school. Mm. Because I was the first one to report. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I told them I lost my dad, so the school administration started looking for a sponsor to help me pay my school fee. Mm -hmm. But it took quite a long time to get the sponsor. I got the sponsor sponsor when I was in Form 3. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who took me through Form 3, Form 4 and part of the college mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. tell me a bit about boarding school how did you manage boarding school we are in a special school okay yeah yeah where, where we were putting up we were in the special need and the other side was we are integrated with the we call them no more leggers those, mm -hmm. <laughs> those who walk <laughs> without any support mm -hmm. yeah but this side we had all the facilities needed. Nyabondo, Nyabondo Rehabilitation Center. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you've heard of it. Yes. Yeah, we had all the facilities for people living with a disability. Mm -hmm. We had the house mother, if you could not manage, we had people who could wash for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, you know, when you joined there and you knew you had a, you know, you, you were able differently, then you found that there were so many people, you know, with perhaps was experience severe severe. severe disabilities severe disabilities how yes. did you feel at first i was afraid of them hmm. because me i could walk even minus the crutch hmm. and uh, without the caliper those the, the the things they put on their legs it, it's called caliper mm -hmm. so in the evening after classes you see they are removing the calipers and they are crawling hmm. and I, I i can remember i was taken i was sleeping in the fire and bed so i could stand I look at them. They are crawling and you just know ladies. Mm. They are whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't say it on television. Mm. I was looking at them and now with the towels and their soap and what the, the soap dish on their head. And I was wondering. And it took me time to cope with them. Mm. It took me like a time mm -hmm. to cope with them. Because I was really afraid of them. Mm. Yeah. Judy. Has there been a point in your life that you feel like God was not very fair to you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you look at other people, you did mention that uh, 
for example when people are running mm. you you just it's when it dawns on you that you know there are certain things you can't do and i'm sure like how you use a matter to or certain things certain facilities getting into stairs and things like that of course you you can't walk at the same pace with sure. like other people do you sometimes feel like god was not fair or what do you feel uh when society sometimes make us feel that god was not fair to us because the society is what is making us more disabled than we are mm -hmm. yeah the barriers the stairs you are talking about the matatu mm. getting into a matatu and like there's a time i was staying when i came to nairobi to uh, to start my job i was staying with a, a distant relative in mukuru i don't know it's called mukuru kwa jenga and i was coming to kenyatta so every day you you have to go to the I mean, bus station you have to pay somebody because people rush to get to the matatu but i can't run so i it's like i'm paying fare twice i pay mine and i pay for somebody to go and hold the chair for me so that i may get in so mm. that's now is when you ask yourself am i a lesser human being why can't this, these people understand and let me in mm. yeah at my pace because they want to go then come back and pick other people mm. yeah so you always feel quite disadvantaged in 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 certain ways especially when you use public transport sure sure and and uh, does that sort of affect you sometimes like how you think about yourself at times at times because maybe you want to go somewhere and the, the, uh, you want to go somewhere and uh, there's time the time that you are given to reach there mm -hmm. then you can't reach that time because you go to the bus stop the bus can the the, the drivers and the, the tools cannot wait for you to get in so they'll just come and those people who are faster they take them and they go mm -hmm. so you waste a lot of time here mm -hmm. i hope mm -hmm. you understand yes yeah mm -hmm. so that makes you feel like mm -hmm. um, the world is not very fair to really, you. yeah but do you blame god by any chance These days because I'm now a grown up I don't blame God. <laughs> <laughs> well there are times you blamed him. Yeah, at times you yeah you have to sometimes you just ask why me God why? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why me God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you are a Seventh Day Adventist yes. and a very active member of Gong Road Seventh Day Adventist Church. I know you are the prayer leader. Yeah. Uh there have been times um you have headed several departments including the adventist possibility ministries department mm. how does that make you feel yeah i feel being the i've been uh, even head of women ministry yes and i can say when i was the women ministry leader in in 2014 at ngongoro desu dia church the women ministry department did well mm even uh, uh, during camp meeting we surpassed mm. the goal that we were given and up to date there's i i can't say it is by my own means but it's through god and the support mm -hmm. and uh, what i've realized that when people see people who are able differently like us they give us more support mm -hmm. i've really got and support and i remember there are people like mama katabaki who joined ngongoro desu church during the time i was women ministry Mm -hmm. mm. And I can rem I remember a, a Sabbath that we were trying to promote and people went to their departments and we had some ladies who visited from Lovington and uh, now during the camp meeting on the day on the week of that camp meeting they came back to look for me and when they came they said we want to see that lady in crutches. Mm. So when I went uh, well, they came in and I was they, I was called and when I went and they said you are promoting on camp meeting expenses and you are given a goal and mm. they give me a check of 30000 amen mm. so you feel like the church at least appreciates you as a person a lot and they do not look at your disability in yeah. terms of how you can perform they know that you can do it and they give you that opportunity yeah, they give me the opportunity yes do you think this is the case with many other people not at all mm. not at all 
I can also say when I joined Gong Road, it was not that easy. It was not people were far. It's few people that came near me, not many. People mm. were looking at me. Then I decided in my heart, why are these people keeping off? They only talk when you talk to them. They don't just greet you like other, any other person. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> then being Judy in me, I started putting earrings to church. Because now I wanted that attention. I wanted somebody to come and ask <laughs> mm -hmm. why I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. Then there's this lady who came and asked me, I know very well the doctrines of this. I'm born and raised here mm. in this church. Because you are ignoring me, I wanted you to now start getting attention mm -hmm. yeah, from you people. Mm -hmm. Again, there is a day that uh, we, they, they wanted some printing papers and I stood and I said I will donate. And when I bought the printing papers, people were like, Kwani, what is this lady doing? Mm. She don't even beg, mm. she's mm. just comfortable coming to church, very smart, mm. with the sister and the nephew. Yeah, so people started to understand me. Mm. Mm. And others like, there are some others who don't see the disability in me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they see me as a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed, you are a person. Yeah, and um, you, in my view, you fully participate in as many activities like any other person. I've seen you participate in weddings. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've been even the lady of a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's mm. a blessing. Amen. Now, now, Judy, of course. You being with a certain, um, let me let me say it, it's it's a disability, really. Mm. It 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 sort of um, stops you from achieving certain th goals, mm. you know, uh, and um, or really getting where you want to get. It, it happens in some cases, not yeah, in all yeah, cases. Yeah. Are there things you feel you would have done? if it weren't for who you are today? Did you have dreams that you feel were not fulfilled as a result of the disability? Yeah, at my age now, I could be a mother of two or three. <laughs> Married <laughs> to a handsome man, but you know, due, due to disability, I'm limited. You know, the people that people don't like, many, if I may say, don't like to socialize with people with disability as a wife or a husband, mm. yeah. Because at my, I'm not a child, I, uh, I need to be somebody's mother and uh, somebody's wife. Mm. But due to disability, you know, others, you may get somebody who loves you and when you go to the family for introduction mm -hmm. and the mother may ask, Pani, this is the one you saw. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But do you feel that 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 sort of um, has inconvenienced your life, or are you enjoying your life just as you are? At, uh, I'm human. Apart from being a Christian, I'm human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it has really put me down because, especially when you have family meetings mm -hmm. and you go home, you see people introducing themselves. I'm Mama so and so. I'm married to such a such a place, mm -hmm. and you just say me, I stay in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I have come to accept myself the way I am and what I am. Mm -hmm. So it does not bother me a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because even if you see what's, uh, what's happening now in the world of marriage, it's better you be alone than to be with a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. So finally you have told God it is okay. I'm happy with myself and I can live as I live now. Yeah, I always pray that if it is his will that, that I be the way I am, I'll serve him the way I am. Mm. But God, God's timing is always the best. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Judy, you are a very active member of the church in terms of um, social activities and spiritual activities. You are almost, every time I come to church, you are there much earlier than me. Mm. How do you plan your day? Does does it being you who you are, for example, make you want to be there in good time or wake up early so that you are not inconvenienced in with public transport? What really pushes you to organize your life as you do? 
You know, Dr. Catherine, God has really done a lot of things in my life. And uh, when it, it reaches Friday and Saturday, that Saturday I just leave it to God. Mm. I have, I plan my, my, I plan my things from Monday, from Sunday. The dresses that I put on while going to work and the ones that I put on on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So on Saturday, that being that I'm the firstborn and being the boss of the house, <laughs> I have my sister, my sisters, I stay with my sister, two of my sisters and my niece. Mm -hmm. So I, I just tell them that tomorrow I'll go to church at 8, or I'll go to church at 7 or at 9. Mm -hmm. So by this time I need the breakfast to be ready. And they do that. Mm -hmm. So me, my work is just to wake up, shower, dress up, take the bre breakfast. I either carry it because I don't like taking things very early in the morning, I carry it to church, or they bring it to me to church. Mm. Yeah. So you have siblings who really care about, about you? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I really have sisters who, who loved me and a brother. Mm -hmm. mm. Did you support them in school? Of course, my dear. Mm. I do. Mm -hmm. I do. I have my brother, my follower, called Duncan. He's now an IT. Mm -hmm. He's also employed at the University of Nairobi where I work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I stayed with him for six years. Mm -hmm. I supported him through school, through, mm -hmm. through college. Yes. So and also have a, my younger sister is there is a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she lives with you. And she lives with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the last one, she just went home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so Judy, yeah. can I say comfortably that uh, your being enabled differently has not stopped you from achieving your dreams sure. and and supporting your family Kabisa. as a firstborn? Kabisa. Wow, that's mm. great. Wow, this is Judy Atito, a lady that is very special. She's first of all always smiling and happy, walking around, uh, serving people, and working at the University of Nairobi. What I've learned from uh, her experience is that really God is faithful and certain choices that we make in life are what determines who we become. Judy lost her dad when she was only in Form 1, but that did not stop her from pursuing her education irrespective of the challenges that she faced and even taking a course that perhaps many people would shy off from because of a certain disability and she went further to do many other courses that have enabled her to work at that level but much more she says that this did not stop her from taking care of her siblings and her widowed mother and sometimes we look at some of these disabilities and we we shy off some of us don't even take our children to school some of us always think that people who are enabled differently are there to beg. So we are always looking out to see if they have a ball around them. And uh, we, you know, that's how we treat people. But I want to encourage you to know that these guys are enabled differently. So as we come to the second part of the program, Judy will be telling us how she manages her work environment in the midst of people that walk faster than her, that take leads, that drive, and how that affects her life. So don't go away. Thank you so much. We just took a short break to take a little water and uh, to adjust ourselves to the fact that God is faithful. I'm still speaking to my sister Judy here, a very special lady, you know, always smiling. Judy, what makes you smile all the time? <laughs> uh, it's natural. Mm. Yeah, it's natural. Mm. Yeah, when you you are alive and you. You just need to thank God and be happy. Because mm. there are many people who are longing 
mm. to walk outside freely. Mm. Others are in prisons, others are in hospital beds, they can't. Mm. Yeah. And by the way, that reminds me that you're a very active member of the chaplaincy ministry, mm -hmm. where you go out to help people in need. Yes. How did you join? I just have passion in helping people, putting a smile to people. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the leader of chaplains is my friend. Mm -hmm. Also special that she's a, at advanced age of mm. her life. Mm. Yes. So, but but people would be, I mean, if I were you, perhaps I would say, I need to be helped, not to help others. How, how do you spare some money that you've uh, saved to give so much? There's, a, there's a, verse, a verse in the Bible that God loves a cheerful giver. Mm. It's better to give than to receive. Mm. So that's the verse <laughs> that keeps me, mm -hmm. and, um, keeps me going. And uh, if I give, I may get other things that go that money cannot buy mm -hmm. that's why you see me smiling all the time mm -hmm. yeah i've never been that sick and uh, admitted in hospital because of the such small things that i do mm -hmm. yeah so you believe that god makes certain provisions yeah you know you do this here but he does something else in another side in another side yeah now let me ask you judy how yeah. how when you started working you did mention that you started working at kenyatta what were you doing at kenyatta kenyatta national hospital mm -hmm. Kenyatta National Hospital is, a, is a, a constituent college of University of Nairobi. Okay. Yeah, that's where I work. And what were you doing? I was just do At first, I was a secretary to the college registrar. Hmm. That is 207. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you cope? That's, that's uh, first yeah. of all, you were working for a very senior person. Mm -hmm. And that meant that there was quite a bit of paperwork to handle. How did you manage? We, we were three of us. Mm -hmm. So me, most of the time I was doing the typing, mm -hmm. uh, typing of the reports, mm -hmm. the correspondence, yeah. Mm -hmm. There were not a lot of movement because we also had office assistants who could help dispatch the documents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also I've been having good bosses, mm -hmm. yes. That they if, if they give me work and they maybe want to check on it, they'll come and sit next to me and mm -hmm. edit it where I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no day that they'll call me, Judy, bring this and that. Mm -hmm. They come where I am. Mm -hmm. They just ask, Judy, are you done? Yes. Then they'll put the chair next to me, we edit together, then I print, then they sign. Okay. Yeah. So that makes your, makes your work much easier. Yeah, easier, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, how do you manage in terms of time? Do you, are you expected to report to work at eight, like it's uh, in other offices? At the university, we have disability policy document that guides on how I should carry out my work. Yeah, each and every person that comes because you know, people may think that this this boss was here, that's why Judy was coming to work at 8.30 or at 9. Mm. But that policy guide. So my reporting time is always 8.30. Mm. Yeah, because the, the principal by then, Professor Kibwage, thought that because of the commuting and commotion of people, Mm. Maybe that 8.30, the commotion will be less, and I could walk freely. Mm. And if you, from Kenyatta stage to the college, mm. that road is always busy with people. Students from MTC, students from the university, those who are coming to see their patient, those who are coming to admit their patient. Mm. Yeah. So th they, they give, and did you always manage to get there at 8.30? Yeah. Kitamba used even to go at quarter to seven, I'm at... The office. office. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. You are very disciplined. At times. <laughs> <laughs> now, how, how do you relate with uh, other people? Do you feel sometimes that in a work environment there are people who perhaps uh, feel like you're just not like them and maybe you're not giving as much output as they do? Output, I'm, I think I'm, I'm better than them. <laughs> no, these people, they don't like to sit in the office. Uh -huh. They like walking with their phones, they want to take selfies, they want to walk, walk along the corridor. When somebody has a new dress, they want to show off. Mm. Me, I really don't have that time. When I sit in the office, what will make me wake up from that office is going to the washroom, mm -hmm. or going for lunch, or maybe there's a visitor who don't want to talk to me in the office and maybe wants to talk outside, I'll walk. But mostly I'm in the office. And I, I think that has given me 
a lot of respect from most of the bosses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm always in my desk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just get me there. If you call, my phone will not go unanswered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're quite disciplined in terms of your work. Yes. Judy, I, uh, that's, that's very impressive. Uh, le let's talk about you as a leader of people with special needs. Yes. What are some of the issues that you think have not been addressed for people that have certain needs, those that are enabled differently? As a country, most of the uh, things that they say, the laws, they're always in papers. They're not implemented, especially when it comes to accessibility. Most of the buildings in Nairobi, if you see them, they're not disability friendly. There's a clip that was going on on our social media. Of a young man on a wheelchair was invited for an interview. But when the, guy, the, the man reached where the interview were being conducted, it was stairs, this small, small, tiny stairs. He sat there on his wheelchair looking at how he will climb to that place to reach the interview room. And if you see such kind of things, just say, what's happening mm. with our leaders? Mm. This thing we say them, like now we are pushing for this disability act to be passed. Now it is in the Senate. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are really praying and folding our fingers that these things should be implemented so that those people who cannot go, cannot implement these things, they will just bring the buildings down the way they are demolishing other buildings. They, they should be disability friendly because we are human. Mm. As you see now, COVID has put people to be disabled. Mm. All of the world is disabled. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All because we are not used to doing things the way we used to do. People are now disabled. So what does that tell us? All of us, we are party to this. We can be disabled one day in life. Mm. Yeah. What, what are some of the things you're pushing for? Employment one being one of them, the 5%. There are people who have implemented, the others who have not. And uh, the health care. When you, when you go to our hospitals, when you, see, uh, you look at those beds, they are somewhere here high. Somebody like me, <laughs> I, how, will I, how will I climb on that bed? I want to go and give back. Mm. Mm. We like climb on those beds. Mm. The transport. If you, it's only in Kise. Kise is a school for the special, it's a, I think it's a college for Kise in full is Kenya uh, Institute of Special, special Education. Education. They are the only people that have a bus mm -hmm. with the f special needs facility. That mm. it goes down, you get in, and it goes up. Mm. Yeah. Our schools. Mm. Yeah. When you look at this school, you know, there are not most of parents can manage the special needs schools. They are quite expensive and they are very far. Like we only have three national special schools. We have Joyland Special School where I school. We have Joy Town in Deika, and we have Mombasa. Mm. How many parents can take their kids there? Maybe from Migori to Mombasa, mm -hmm. or from Kisumu to Dika, mm. it's not that easy. So it, it forces parents to take their kids to the normal schools, which the facilities are not friendly mm. to people with disability, especially with physical disability, like me. Mm. Mm. What are some of the ways you feel quite disadvantaged in public places? How, like washrooms? Washrooms, mm -hmm. yeah. Like maybe there's no lift and mm -hmm. you want to go to the second floor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even when I was coming here, there, there was like a stairs. I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see. So when now even you are saying we, 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 social, we, cannot social, we cannot be social distance because mm -hmm. I need assistance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. during this time of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. And that might be the experience of many people. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there are people who are severely handicapped, who need assistance most of the time mm -hmm. to eat, to shower, even to walk around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Judy, there are many, many f 
families that may be having um, children with such needs and uh, for one reason or the other they have shied off. Why do you think your mom was very conscious of ensuring that she, she put you through school so that you are now independent? Uh, I think it all depends with each and every person. Mm. Yeah. Because my mom gave birth to me, a very beautiful girl, to make firstborn mm. in that. And all of a sudden, Judy's life changed. Mm. So most of the time, my mom will tell me, Judy, I have to sacrifice for you to go to school because you cannot go to somebody's shamba to Kolema. Mm. So you have to go to school. Mm. It's the, the, your books that will help you. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the motto that made her to take me through school. Mm. Yeah. Is it something you can encourage other parents to do? Yeah, I can tell parents not to keep their children with special needs. They should bring them out and expose them to the world. Mm. Yeah. But I am happy there's a, there's a week that uh, parents, they were exposing their children with special needs on social media. Mm. Yeah, and uh, mostly the, this, if you live alone, the disability are physical, mm. visual and hearing. We mm. also have autism, cerebral mm. palsy. So mm. the parents are coming out. Yeah, because the, there's this lady that was aired on Citizen, Sharon Mora with an autistic. Mm -hmm. Two children with autistic. Mm. And I think that lady made other parents to come out now to talk about their children and the challenge they are facing. Mm. Yeah. So the best, uh, for, the, for the best interest of the child, the family should be willing to first of all accept yeah they accept the child and, and see how they can support that child to True. be sort of independent sure mm. Mm -hmm. how, how do you think the church is also helping people with needs like you because you lead a group yes and you are ahead of a department mm. do you think that the church is giving sufficient help to enable you you know, perform to your best as a member of a church? Yeah, the church, these days they are trying. But Kitambo, mutu kiwete angengia kanisani, utasikia kiwete atapona, visiwi wataona. And that will now lower our self-esteem. Because, you know, we are utapona. It is part of your life. Mm. So when you hear of such things, you keep off, even coming to church. Mm. Now that they have, they are, they, they have been sensitized and they have read their Bibles mm. and now they know how to handle. They know these are these people and they, they live the way they are until eternity. Mm. So the, the attitude has changed. Mm. Yeah. And uh, now it's, you see that we are being given even work in church mm. to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like me, I'm in many, 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 many councils in the church. <laughs> <laughs> It but keeps your weekend busy. <laughs> yeah, it keeps my weekend busy all the time. We are, you, you are in a meeting, you are in that and that. Mm. And I've also joined Master Guide. Oh, you are training? I'm now. training as a Master Guide. Mm -hmm. mm, it's very know. rigorous, I know. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. So now it, it comes to going to those bushes. Now I don't go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, know. I just go to class land, but I don't go to those camp out. Mm. Mm. But at least you are trying to engage yourself with activities that exactly. really require yeah. a lot of energy and a lot of movement. Yes. Now tell me a bit, um, of course you were not working with this in the past. How did you end up now with this? You told me that there were times you were not working with it. Yeah, from, from class four to class, I went to boarding school in a special school when I was in class six. So when I went there, I was introduced to crutch mm -hmm. because I could walk holding my my oh, knee okay. and it brought this the back hatch okay. so when I went there they introduced me to crutch so that I may, I may walk straight but when they wanted to take me for operation because one of my leg is shorter than the other so when my dad was called and told he refused because they were going to put uh, is it a clip or what a gadget they were going to put here for my legs to be straight then my father was like what about if I die and these things need to be changed? Mm. Who will help her? Who will finance? Mm. Then he refused, but he agreed that I used this and I also had a, a wrist polio boot. 
which I left when now I was becoming a lady. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to have the normal shoes like the others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that hatch at the back wasn't there? It wasn't there. It's because of the movement now, because people are running and you also want to go for lunch and come back to school. Mm -hmm. So I, now I was walking holding my knee. Mm -hmm. So it started growing. And uh, my mom came to me for a very long time to live holding my, but I was used to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So from then you used this? Yeah, from there when I went to Nyabundo, I was given, I was introduced to this. Mm -hmm. But it was not a nice one like this one, it was a stiff one. <laughs> 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 I was introduced to this and a polio boot, mm -hmm. raised, one was raised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you actually do without it? Yes. When I'm in the house, I d even when I'm in the office, mm. in the corridors, you'll meet me. I'm going to the washroom. I don't use it. Mm. Mm. But it supports you when you yeah, get Yeah, it supports me when I walk. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know that, Judy, these are also some of the things that are quite expensive for some families. It is. It is. Is, there in, I is there a way that uh, you are sensitizing people to help buy things like this for those that may not be able to? There are, there are people who sometimes call us because if you look at my Facebook account, I make it very clear that I'm somebody living with a disability. Some people might come into my inbox, how can I get this? Mm -hmm. Like there's a time when I was home on leave, Ushago in Kisumu. Then somebody just called me, Judy, I need a crutch. So you know you have to make an arrangement for this person to get a crutch. This was just a normal boy who was doing his things, then all of a sudden became sick and could not now move on his mm -hmm. own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did you help? I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. I've also even gifted somebody with mine because me, I have them. My, my uncle works in an hospital mm -hmm. in Sweden mm -hmm. and he comes with them. And mm -hmm. anytime he comes with a new one, he has to give me. Mm -hmm. So I have quite a number. So whenever you get, you also donate? I also donate. So after using, the, like the way you may use your shoe or your dress and now you don't want it anymore, you just mm -hmm. give it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As we come close to the end of the show, Judy, I have two questions. One is, what do you think we can do differently to support people with special needs? What should we change? Attitude. Mm -hmm. Attitude is the biggest disability that we have, especially as Africans. When we change our attitude towards people with a disability and make the environment, enable the environment to be friendly, we are good to go. Mm -hmm. We will not bother anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what do you think the church can do to support you better and support other people that need help, people with needs like yours or similar like yours? Uh, one, Dr. Catherine, what I want to say, because SDA church, our churches are not disability friendly. I was telling some of my friends now, that now if I want to wed, which church will I go to? Look at their pulpits. So you see, most of the time I'm being helped to get onto our pulpit. Mm -hmm. So I was telling somebody, I'll do a, a, a garden wedding. Then they were telling me, SDA, you be all right. Yes, they will just have to do it for me. Mm -hmm. Because their pulpits are not disability friendly. Mm -hmm. Hmm? So let the, even them, even church, let them enable the environment. It's the environment that is making us more disabled than we are. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. perhaps discouraging other people from yeah, yeah, coming, from to, coming church. to church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even if you meet me outside, don't, don't look at me as if I'm a ghost. I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just accept me. Mm -hmm. mm, that's a positive attitude towards me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There may be someone watching you today and they feel that um, they have been discouraged before and perhaps even quit church mm -hmm. or quit socializing with other people as a result of people, other people's attitudes. I want you to look at that camera and tell them something good. Uh, what I want to say, all of us are disabled in different ways. But one thing that one needs to do, first, accept yourself the way you are, despite your disability. Because all of us, disability is a club that anybody can join anytime. Mm -hmm. So just accept yourself and do what makes you happy and not any other person. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
I've been speaking to Sister Judy at it. Uh, she has said it. She has said that this club of disability can be joined by anybody, anytime. Just think about it. How many people were born normally and as a result of some accident, some illness, are now in wheelchairs or they are blind or they are deaf. All these things can happen to us. But one other thing I have picked is the need for me and you to change our attitude towards people with special needs. Just in case you've been viewing them as people who just need to be given food and clothing on the streets and left there, just know that they can achieve. At least you can tell from Judy. She has an office. She works at one of the prestigious universities in this country. She makes it to the office at 8.30 and she works all the way and goes home at 5. How much more would we do for people like this to support them? But the, she loves the Lord and she supports the church. She's a leader in her church. So these guys are just like us. And I pray that the Lord may help us as we think of people around us that have certain needs, special needs that we need to support, that we will not give a blind eye, that we can actually go out and see how best we can support them to achieve their dreams. Thank you very much for watching. I'm so excited to know that you're there. And keep watching Hope Channel Kenya. We have such nice special programs for you. Our interest is to help you understand this life and live it to the best, but also help you prepare for eternity. Mm. And our prayer is that the Lord may help you through this station to really know him as your personal savior. Thank you very much for watching, Sister Judy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. We look forward to having you again, not again to talk about issues of disability, but to tell us many more things that God has given you to share with other people. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. God bless you too. Thank you. Thank you.